Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about the three main reasons why I ended up leaving the religious establishment of Christianity. What this is not, it is not a video to bash Christianity or Christians. I was in Christianity for 34 years of my life. I'm almost 35. For most of my adult life within Christianity, I was very happy. I was growing. I was healthy within Christian churches. There are three th issues that I want to point out that can be damaging, can be unhealthy, and can be toxic for some people. And these are things that the Christian establishment needs to take an honest look at and needs to address and change if it wants to survive. These are also things that some people who are involved in the church or who have their kids involved in the church might want to take an honest look at to make sure that it is not negatively affecting your life. Number one reason that I ended up leaving the church was the tribal mindset. I did not ultimately leave because of differences and beliefs or doctrine. I left because of the tribal mindset that the religious organization of Christianity promotes around its beliefs and doctrine. The idea that there is only one right way to think and believe, and that way is our way. And if you disagree with us, if you believe differently than us, not only are you wrong, but you are going to hell, you're taking your kids and your family with you, and you're taking anyone you influence with you. And we are completely within our rights in trying to influence you and manipulate you back into our way of thinking. This is what the tribal mindset of religion does. It creates a false sense of security. We are in the in-group, and we have a special relationship with God, and we get special benefits that other people don't get. People often believe that they alone will be raptured in the end times, or that they alone are going to heaven, or that they alone have this exclusive relationship with Jesus. The tribal mindset also creates a savior complex. It sets us against the world, and we have to go out and save all these lost and sleeping people. It creates a very dim and depressing worldview. The world is basically lost and going to hell unless we could reach every last one of them with our dogma, there's no hope for them. When I was involved in Christian circles, a lot of the energy was around how do we get so-and-so saved? How do we reach the world with the gospel? How do we reach the city or our neighbors with the gospel? And it was considered completely normal to spend this obsessive amount of energy trying to figure out how to get people to believe the same way that you do. So there was a lot of manipulation that happened, um, although it wasn't seen that way at all because you see yourself as saving someone from eternal torment and hell, so you're really within your rights. I mean, it's the most loving thing that you can do to manipulate them into your way of seeing things, right? But it was never just about showing somebody love. It was never about just going to the soup kitchen to serve someone a meal because you wanted to serve someone a meal. It was never about inviting someone out for coffee because you wanted to spend time with them. It was all about what do I have to do to get involved in this person's life so that somewhere down the line, I can introduce them to my beliefs. I can get them to pray the sinner's prayer. I can get them to make the confession of faith. I can get them to come to church with me. It's pure manipulation. It is dishonesty. It's toxic and it's unhealthy. One thing that bothered me a lot was the Christian tribalism and possessiveness around Jesus. I can say this with some certainty as somebody who was involved in the church for 34 years, um, that Christians do believe that they alone have a personal relationship with Jesus, that they alone can interpret the Bible, that they alone are the authority on Jesus Christ. It's sort of just a given that they alone are the followers of Jesus and anybody else in any other religion or worldview who has a different opinion of Jesus or who may claim to have had an experience with Jesus or a relationship with Jesus, that they are wrong. Jesus is not a business name to be copyrighted or a trophy to be displayed on the shelf. Jesus belongs to no one. There is no one religious establishment that has the corner on Jesus or has the right to tell everybody the truth about him. Reason number two why I ended up leaving the church is codependent toxicity. 
And I think this is a trait that is common across religions. I don't think that it is limited to just Christianity. Organized religion is set up so that you become dependent on it, dependent on the teachings, dependent on whatever it is selling to you so that you keep coming back for more. Mainstream Christianity is based around the belief that something is wrong with us. We are innately broken or bad or sinful. We need a savior. We need to be fixed. We don't deserve God's love. We don't deserve anything from God. And Jesus is the answer to that. Jesus came to restore our relationship with God, fix us to make us worthy of love, much of Christian theology is taken up with how empty and broken we are and how dependent we are on Jesus for everything. Our worth, our being, our breath, we owe him every moment. And while there is, and please hear me, there are elements of truth here. There is an element of truth that we are completely dependent on God for our being because God is existence itself and we are part of that existence. We exist within God's being. There's also a sense in which we do sacrifice the false self in order to fully grow into our true nature. And there are sacrifices and there is surrender and there is dependency on the divine that happens in that process. But the idea that we are undeserving of love, that we are unworthy, that our relationship with God is somehow broken, that we need anything outside of ourselves to fix us or to fill us up or to satisfy us is complete religious nonsense. It is unhealthy, it promotes toxicity and codependency, and it makes it easy for abusive relationships and situations to hide behind closed doors. Should we live in surrender, in the flow of the moment, looking to the divine source of life for sustenance? Absolutely, yes. But that divine source, that divine flow of life is within us. And there's this beautiful dichotomy where the more we surrender to it, the more empowered we become at the same time. Because we are surrendering to the flow of the divine expressed through us and as us. We are surrendering to and growing into our true nature. Teaching people that you have no access to God, that you are unworthy of love, undeserving of a relationship with God, unless you believe that God had to kill Jesus and pour out his wrath on Jesus to pay for your sins, it is toxic, it is unhealthy, and it is damaging, especially when it is taught to young, impressionable children. Teaching people that now, because Jesus did this for you, you have to obsess about him and you have to, every thought, every word, every moment of every life has to be about Jesus is also codependent. Did he come to save us, to awaken us, to help us to grow and evolve spiritually? Yes, yes, and yes. Should we call to him for salvation when we are lost and for forgiveness when we are guilty and for healing when we are sick and on and on and on? Yes, that's his purpose. That's what he's here for. He's here to help us. And I encourage people to do that. But there's a big difference between doing that and what the church promotes as humility, but really as false humility. Promoting this codependency, obsessive possessiveness. Jesus himself, although he did say that he would be with us, also said, don't cling to me. I must ascend to my father and your father, my God and your God. I am going to send you the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. And the Holy Spirit is where? Within you. In the words of the Apostle Paul, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Christ is within you, the hope of glory. So people make it all about this historical event where Jesus, the man who lived historically 2,000 years ago, made you worthy of love, and now you need to obsess about how to serve him and worship him for the rest of your life. When Jesus, in fact, said, springs of living water are flowing from within you, and Paul said, the same spirit of Christ that raised Jesus from the dead is within you. 
Jesus was pointing us to the divine reality within us. You are already divine. You are already loved by God simply because you exist. Jesus came to point you to this reality and help you to awaken and grow into it. Jesus never once, never once in the Gospels asked us to confess him as Lord. In fact, he said the Son of Man came to serve not to be served. And he said many of those who do call him Lord don't actually know him. Telling people that they need to be dependent on anything or anyone outside of themselves, even if that person is Jesus, for their sense of worth, for their rightness with God, for their inner satisfaction and fulfillment, will lead to disappointment and disillusionment. Reason number three that I left the church was because of the idolization of doctrine over experience of God. The end goal of any religion or spiritual path is supposed to be about the experience of God, the experience of the divine, knowing God, right? And there's this saying in Christianity, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ the knowing of God in the person of Jesus Christ, right? The only thing you have to do to be saved is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But what's required to have this personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Well, Christians will say that you don't have to do anything. Jesus has already done it and you don't have to do anything. But they forget that believing is actually a doing. And you'd better have your beliefs on point and they'd better be exactly like mine or you can't know Jesus Christ. You can't know God. You have to believe that Jesus died, was buried, and was raised from the dead after three days in order to know Jesus, in order to know God. And okay, I can understand saying that you have to believe these things in order to become a member at a Christian church. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is an identifying feature of the religion of Christianity. But to say that you have to mentally assent to this doctrine in order to know God, that's idolizing your doctrine. You are no longer preaching grace. You are preaching works through believing the correct doctrine. I'm not a grace preacher myself. I don't subscribe to the doctrine that Jesus did everything that had to be done to make us right with God and there's nothing we have to do because I don't believe that we were ever alienated from God to begin with. I'm just pointing out the inconsistency in the logic here. You also have to believe this whole other set of doctrines that was established at the Council of Nicaea. You have to believe in the virgin birth. You have to believe in the Trinity. that Jesus was fully human and fully divine. The Nicene Creed has since been added to now. You must believe in a physical place called heaven and hell, eternal hell. I've been told countless times and I'm still told today that because I don't believe hell is eternal, I'm going to go to hell. My non-belief in an eternal hell is enough to warrant me eternal punishment in hell just for not believing that hell is eternal. So there's a condition for salvation. There's a condition being placed on my ability to know God. I can't know God unless I subscribe to all these this set of doctrines. So can you see how this is salvation based on correct beliefs? One that really gets harped on a lot is beliefs about the Bible. The Bible is elevated to the place of divinity, really. this The scripture is really worshipped in Christian circles. If you do not believe that the Bible is inerrant and infallible and the only source of divine inspiration from God that we have, that we can reliably depend on, then you are going to hell for not believing that. God cannot reveal himself to you unless you believe that the Bible is inerrant and infallible. You can even still use the Bible as a, as a spiritual text. You can still read it every day and learn from it every day and base your life on it. But if you don't believe it is the inerrant, infallible word of God, you're going to hell. There has to be a better measurement of how to tell if you know God than having the correct belief system or subscribing to the correct doctrine. And in fact, there is, and it is simply laid out, ironically enough, in the Bible. Anyone who loves knows God because God is love. In fundamentalist religion, holding to the outward form 
of religion such as doctrine, theology, tradition, icons, holy books is elevated to the place of idolatry. It's elevated far above the actual experience of knowing God, the actual experience of having a relationship with God, the infilling and the indwelling of God to the point where oftentimes an inner experience of God is denigrated to the place of unreliability and unreality. Ironically enough, people who believe that you have to hold a correct set of doctrines to know God will condemn those who have an experience of God by saying your experience is subjective and unreliable, when in fact your doctrine is subjective and unreliable because no two people hold to the exact same doctrine. Even people within the same church who hold to the same confession of faith will have their own individual subjective interpretation of these beliefs and their theology and their supporting scriptures and how to walk it out. Our entire human experience is subjective because we are all unique individuals. So our doctrine will look different, our beliefs will look different, our experience will look different. But the true experience of God that we are all after is actually universal and it is incredibly simple. It is inner peace and wholeness and it is the embodiment and the expression of love. And it is this experience of God that we are all after, that all religious teachings point to, that all religious doctrine and traditions and holy books speak of. And it is not right to elevate the mechanism above the experience itself. And another side note that I could add on here is that religion often teaches that God is outside of you. Christianity definitely teaches that God is a being outside of you and separate from you, that you are somehow supposed to be sustained by. We were just talking about this in the previous point with Jesus. You can never be sustained by a person who exists outside of you. It always must come from within. And the experience of God always happens from within. And the religion of Christianity oftentimes makes it very difficult to have that experience because it is so focused to the point of, idolizing the outward form and mechanism of getting there um, that people never actually get to the end goal which is experiencing being filled with the divine so i'm gonna stop there be loved be happy be at peace and thank you for watching mm -hmm.